Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. We have Sean here with us today, who's a motocross rider, and he has been through several motocross traumas, I've been describing, <laughs> when you, yeah, yeah, a few wrecks and bangs and bruises. Yeah, I've gotten thrown off quite a few times, got and my ribs. Injured his rib cage, and as a result of that, he started developing some hiatal hernia issues, acid reflux and hiatal hernia, which is pressure feeling down under his rib cage and his sternum, and we've been seeing him for a few weeks now, and we're going to show you how we treat him. So let's take a look at you first here, Sean. Let's take a look at your posture. I'm going to have you flex your head forward and backwards. Motocross is actually a very tough sport, professional sport, and requires quite a bit of strength and stamina just to do that. I mean, you guys out there are motocross riders. Okay, so he's got some translations in his neck and pelvis, but other than that, he's looking better. So we're going to put him on his back here and decompress him first. And I won't talk while I'm decompressing him, so you guys out there, all you crack addicts, can hear you smile and all the clapping that goes on. By the way, to get to our YouTube channel, go to our website at www.advancedhoustonchiropractor.com and it has a direct link to our web uh, YouTube channel and our uh, Google Plus page if you're a patient here and you want to leave a review. We've got 34 five-star reviews on Google. Take a nice deep breath in your nose. There we go. Feel that all the way down? Good. Okay, so move you up. See, he's still kicking. All right. Always do that reflex afterwards so that our heart can pinch out. Patients know they're still connected. You can usually see an improvement in the patellar reflexes pre and post adjustment too, which is adjusting the spine on the y-axis, spinal decompression. So let's come over this way. And I did it manually as opposed to using one of those BRX 9000s or Vax D's, which are basically, in my opinion, just glorified traction machines. Legs are exactly even. That's a good start. Gets a little tight in your little back right there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a positive knock. As you see, his pelvis raised up off the table and tightened up down here. And he felt a little increase in the muscle hypertonicity. So we're adjusting his SI joint on the right first sacrum right in the center here and then his left SI joint and you notice I always suggest those SI joints right in the 45 degree plane of those SI joints in the drop piece whenever it drops the joints keep moving object in motion tends to stay in motion so that's the physics of this biology that's why it's called biophysics Right now I'm adjusting his lumbar spine vertebrae in the z-axis and you notice my arm angle changes as I come up the lumbar spine all the way up to L1 there. Okay, I'm going to put you in for this, so let's go there. Perfect. This upper thoracic, you almost have to get a superior to inferior draw line and drive to get those to move better. And I'm going to put some deep pressure right down in his quadratus and borum and multifidus and rector spine musculature at the lumbosacral spine region, which is where his low back and pelvis meet. The L5-S1 disc is the most commonly degenerated and herniated disc in the entire spine because it's responsible for the majority of the weight bearing of the entire upper torso and upper body. 
And then we get over here into the gluteus medius and maximus, and those guys are pretty tender usually. And you can tell just by feeling, even with your elbow, like this right one's more sore, huh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Sean, he's tough, so he can handle this deeper pressure. I don't do this on everyone, but I do use deep, deep trigger point therapy, mild fascia release techniques on most all of our patients on every visit because we are neuromusculoskeletal meaning skeleton the bones are involved structure which affects the nervous system which also affects the muscles and ligaments which is the soft tissue components that are responsible for holding bone to bone ligaments hold bone to bone and muscles move the bone so we've got to get that's perfect Okay, let's turn you on your back now. We've got to get a response in all three of those. So we adjust the structure, which affects the neurological connections, improves those, and balances the musculoligamentous system so that the spine can get stable. Okay, got another one here that didn't get it all. There we go, good. Yeah, scoot back up that way just a little bit for me there, Sean. Adjusting his toes. So when patients come in here and they do take their shoes off, I do adjust them literally from head to toe. I'm sure you can hear all those. There we go, good. He's got just a little tightness in his tibia. I'll see it's here. It feels like a little more on the right side. Did it to you as well? Yes. Right there. So we're doing a little muscle spindle technique here. Golgi tendon apparatus. We're tricking the muscle, thinking it's contracting so they don't relax. Good. Okay, let's set you up and face towards your knee. Yeah. Ribs have gotten a lot better from when he first came in, but we're still grabbing the top of the fundus of his stomach and pulling it down, back down through the diaphragm. There we go, good. And another one. And you do not want to do this unless you are a licensed health care provider. Don't be doing this on your family or your kids, because you can get on the liver, the gallbladder and injured that so I'm staying over to the left side of all that because the liver and gallbladder are under the right rib cage there we go now I adjust his ribs too uh, you can see his rib cage is a little elevated on the left side compared to this right side so let's slide you down Sean put your legs all the way over the edge of the table there good and there we go So I adjusted his AC joints out here on his shoulders, and now the costosternal joint, which is where the clavicular, the clavicle, and the sternum meet. So that's the sternoclavicular joint, and then the costosternal joints is where the ribs attach at the front. Now his left rib cage is a little bit, or his right rib cage is a little bit lower, so we're going to adjust that back upwards. Excellent. Okay, now let's sit you back up and face towards your knee again. Okay. Sean, so uh, would you mind telling our YouTube subscribers how you've done since you've been in here and if this has helped your hiatal hernia and the things you came in here for? Yeah, so basically I came in here for just rib pain up in the front and some back pain as well in the back. And basically I'd say my hiatal hernia pain started around 5 to 6 and... Since doing treatment, I'd say it's steadily gone down to about a two. So I could definitely tell improvement in both my ribs and my back. 
and you're able to, and your neck pain's gone away from a lot of your motocross accidents. Yes. And, 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 and. You adjusted my neck quite well. Don't have any more of that unless I hurt it again sometimes on motocross. So, so is this something you would recommend to other motocross drivers and, and athletes? Yeah, if you're a motocross racer and you crash a lot, I would definitely recommend getting some adjustments from Dr. Johnson. He's a good chiropractor. Well, thank you very much, Sean. Thank you for sharing your story with yes. everybody. This is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. We'll see you next time.